Hey guys and welcome back to yet another YouTube video. Today we're going to do something very different from what we've done before. Welcome to Iceland, Reykjavik Open. In fact, I did not plan to play this tournament at all. I didn't expect to be here. It was like a week ago that my good friend Alex Botis messaged me. Hey Dina, are you coming to Iceland? And right then I was in the middle of my OTB round robin grandmaster tournament in Charlotte, United States. And I was like, Reykjavik? open? It's in a week. Yeah, I should come. Before we dive into the moves, I wanted to tell you what motivated or better say inspired me to uh, take down this challenge and create a recap for you. See, the thing is, everybody is going professional here in Iceland. Anna Kramling, Alex Bodis, Simon Williams, everybody is streaming their games and playing competitive chess. And I am a professional chess player myself, so I was like, why shouldn't I go professional content creator and start recording YouTube recaps? You see what I mean? Exactly, let's go. Round 1 Reykjavik Open 2023. I am playing Black Pieces versus Trisco Lucia, rated 2002, and the game started with e4. Now, obviously, I prepared for this game and I knew that my opponent was going for e4. That wasn't a surprise for me. I prepared my good old Karakan. Everybody watching this video knows that I play Karakan or we'll discover right now. So Karakan goes with c6, d4, d5. Knight c3 was the line that I expected. D takes e4, knight takes e4. Now what's interesting is that I did see that my opponent played almost often main lines in whatever opening was occurring. So I was like, I should definitely surprise her. You know, those young kids, they have uh, good coaches and, you know, coaches who look deep, you know, in the preparations and yeah. So basically I assumed that my opponents would have two different levels of chess. Chess level when they are prepared and chess level when they are not prepared. So I really need to make myself go out of her book and that's why I decided to go for knight f6. Obviously, knight f6 is not the main line. The main line is bishop f5. But knight f6 after knight takes f6 is, and here e takes f6 is something that is pretty serious as well for black. Maybe a little bit more double-edged because, you know, the structure is more weird. But black is looking for dynamics, you know, creating some stuff and... Uh, here and there. I have plenty of games in this position in the database with both white and black. So things are pretty smooth. But... For my today's game, I actually prepared something really, really surprising. G takes F6, exactly. It's a very dubious move, I know. I know that computer gives black worse and white advantage, obviously, but the thing is, I'm not playing against computer, I'm playing against human. And most importantly, I'm playing against the kid. I need to get my opponent out of her comfort zone and out of her book, and this is exactly what I was going for. Bishop f4. Well, honestly, here there are many moves for white. In, in fact, there are way too many, like c3, knight f3, bishop e2, g3, bishop f4, etc, etc, etc. Bishop f4 is one of them. So here I decided, or better say, I prepared something a bit more creative. Knight a6. Knight a6 is not a typical move because usually you do not put the knight on, on the edge, you know the edge, the the great old saying, knight on the rim is slim, as Andrea Bodis would say, or the more traditional version of it, knight on the rim is dim. Either way, knight on the rim is not good when it's dim, or knight on the edge is not great. But here the idea is the knight will come to c7, and then to d5 and e6, and even this line with the bishop on f4, it's making even more sense, because then the, the knight would attack the bishop when the bishop would be already, you know, a little bit... Uh... <laughs> A little bit, you know, attacked. That's what they say. Anyway, diving into the game, c3, knight c7. Yes, that's my maneuver. Well, one of you watching this video might ask, Dina, what if bishop takes? And then the pawn takes, and why destroy black's pawn chain on, on the queen side? But you know what? The bright side here, or the side effect of destroying the pawn chain, is that black has now pairs of bishops, a pair of bishops, two bishops, two bishops, it's a strong thing, believe me. <laughs> Two bishops are worth the, the double pawns on the A file. C3. C3 usually, I mean, it's a nice development move, but I also like maybe one day bishop d3, you know, defending the d4 square, even though like in the game the opponent did not play bishop d3. Because after knight c7, g3 has followed. Now I have to be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen watching this video, g3 is in fact one of the strongest plans here, because after bishop g2, kind of it 
facilitates the attack here for white with the pawns or with the pieces, whatever, and probably castle short side, whereas black can only castle long sides. So yeah, it, it's it's a nice setup, kudos for, for, to my opponent for having found one of the most principal setups for white, even though I have to tell you I'm not sure it's the strongest way now that the bishop is on f4. In the game I proceeded with h5. h5 basically is to go for h4, obviously, but I did have a choice. When, when I was preparing for this game, I figured out that the strongest plan here or... <laughs> I'm lying to you. My coach told me. The strongest plan here after g3 is try to confuse white after playing something like queen d5, knight f3, bishop g4, bishop g2, and you know try to play for dynamics. Now forcing white to play queen e2, and after queen takes e2, king takes e2, we're in the end game. Perhaps this is objectively the most or the best approach for black. But to me, it seemed a little bit, you know, a little bit too easy. You know, I've, I've learned over the years and the years of competing, when you want to outplay a lower rated opponent, you really need to keep some pieces on the board. The more, the better. I mean, obviously, it depends on the situation, but it's in general good to keep pieces on the board because this is what lets your opponent makes, make mistakes. And this is exactly what happened in the game. I didn't go for queen d5, therefore, and I decided to go for something a little more edgy, but again, trying to complicate h5. Obviously, the, the best move here for white is knight f3, the same that they did, stopping h4. And now my idea was to play bishop g4, and after bishop g2, which would be the best, I would go for h4. But here is the thing little nuance. Now white has h3 attacking the bishop and I do have to trade my bishop for the knight like bishop f3, queen f3 and probably white is, I mean definitely white is better because of once again two bishops and by watching this video if you made this that far then you know already that two bishops are stronger than bishop and the knight in open positions. You're asking me what's an open position? Are you asking me what's an open position? Listen, that question belongs to the comment section down below. I'm not answering it right now. Hey, you, watching this video. Exactly you. I'm staring at you. Are you sure you subscribed? The button is right here down below. Do consider clicking it. It would mean the world to me. And besides, it's completely free. So I would do it if I were you. Back to where we started. H3 followed after bishop g4 and h3 is actually something that I really expected. I mean, it's it's logical, but the thing is, here is what I prepared the trap for my opponent. After bishop f5, I mean, I'm not giving my bishop for the knight. After bishop f5, bishop g2, queen d7, and now my both bishop and the queen attack on h3 and white cannot castle. Isn't that spicy? Knight h4 followed. It's interesting that computer puts this move as like the best for white, but in the game I really thought it was a bad move because, you know, the good old saying, knight on the rim is slim, <clears throat> deem, bishop e6, and here we go with queen a4. Once again, I am not convinced by this move at all, even though Stockfish is super excited, but, you know, Stockfish are... <laughs> Stockfish... Sto Stockfish doesn't have any any... I can't say that in my first ever recap, otherwise you'll go very wild on me. 95. 95 is what I really liked about my position here, with the idea that I attack the bishop, bishop has to go away, and now knight b6, asking the queen, young lady, what are you doing here at this hour? It's pretty late already, almost midnight and still outside. The young lady goes away, yeah, she, she's afraid of the bargain boys, like, my knight on b6. Bishop d5 was my plan. Bishop takes, queen takes, and now, come on. Honestly, stockfish? I don't understand. Black is so good. Why are you giving plus one to white in this position? 0 0.8, 0 0.6. Okay, he comes down. I mean, honestly, guys, if you want to learn how to, how to play chess, you shouldn't follow Stockfish. You should follow ideas. And here, human ideas are that the queen is nice. We traded the bishop and look at the light squares. They're really, really weak. I mean, not h2, but light squares are really weak. Black's now going to castle long and, you know, put the rooks and attack. And it just seems like, like black has its own play, right? 
I mean, White also should really go on with pushing this pawns, and then it's gonna be the chase, so it's gonna be about who's the fastest here. Obviously me. Okay, queen takes d5, short castle, long castle. I wasn't sure should I go with d6 first or long castle after, but it seems like if white goes for the best plan, which is like b3, c4, then I eventually like I will long castle. And that's what I told myself. No matter what I do here, e6 or long castle or anything else, I will have to castle long anyway, because one cannot play chess with their king in the center. Yes, it's a well-known truth. So long castle. Bishop f4. Okay, I think this is actually the first and the most like the first serious inaccuracy here for white because this move bishop f4 is just not making any sense. I mean, girl, come on, what are you what are you doing here with your bishop alone without any defense? I mean, the bishop didn't they already tell you that the knight is gonna come to d5 and attack your bishop? Girl, calm down. Okay. Um, what to do here? The question, the serious question, on the serious tone. If I do e6 and then bishop e7 with my general plan of f5 and bishop h4, I mean, bishop not, I mean, I will go away to g2 and then I'll push h4. Okay, fine. But can't I do the same thing a little bit faster? Actually, if we go, if we want to go by move by move, then e6, uh, I, I wasn't, I wasn't convinced after a4 and if I go here then a5 knight d5 and then already like a6 is in the air so yeah I wasn't I wasn't convinced by this whereas if I try to be extremely fast here which I really should like every single tempo matters I could start with queen d7 and the difference is that now I attack on h3 white has defined by their king this is what happened in the game and now I have an extra tempi because my knight is already ready to jump to d5. And obviously I don't have to explain to you why I need to chase this bishop away. Because I mean, bro, he's strong. He needs to go out. I mean, any piece of your opponent that's pointing on you is uncomfortable, okay? And this bishop really, really, really points on my king. So I need to push him away. In fact, this bishop is like the strongest piece of white. So obviously I'm going to push him away. And you know, when it comes to knights, they really belong to the center. So e6, I mean, we don't have to hurry with, with the knight on d5. Knight g2, ooh, seems like we do have to hurry with the knight on d5. Knight d5, attacking the bishop. And this is actually um, where I had a choice. Now, if I put it a little bit back, before playing knight d5, my other option was to play h4. It's a sacrifice. It was my initial idea and the first thing that came to my mind. Like, seriously, it was my plan. I did consider it. But the problem is that after h4, I wasn't convinced after g4, knight d5, I'd I get the bishop, bishop goes away. And then if I go f5, they go g5, and then they want to play f4. I only looked at something like bishop d6, f4, and then I was like, mm, okay, I should have attack, but where is the attack? I'm not sure. Instead, here, according to the computer, I just have a super simple f6 plan, and then it's just like everything is blowing. I could even start with bishop e7, and then after f4, f6, and just like, I think it's a harakiri very soon here for white. Everything is just opening up, and the king is definitely not feeling himself at home at all. Even though home is where your heart is. But here the heart would definitely be uh, broken. <laughs> Sag. h4. And then the best would be definitely to play knight takes h4. But after knight d5, yeah, f bishop d2, f5. And yeah, black has a lot of play attacking here. I mean, with all these lines for the rook. In fact, I mean, everybody knows, which is sack a pawn. Every Russian kid knows that when in the case of opposite castles, you sack pawns to open files for your rooks, and this is where you're gonna attack. So such moves as h4, normally you do them automatically. Well, I did start overthinking here, and that costs, you know, everything what you see. So knight d5, h4, and now, yeah, well, moves are so automatic. Of course, I had some choice, maybe, maybe I didn't, but for me, like, knight takes f4 was so natural. Because after knight takes, f4, knight takes f4, just develop my bishop, and now my plan is super easy. I just put my rooks on the on the g and the h, and then I just push f4, f5, and then just I open everything. Queen e4 is the first real mistake. Here, automatically black plays rook 
d8 to g8 and now rook g4 and everything is coming and the diagonal and like I don't even need to rush with f5 because in fact knight will not be able to move knight can move even now anymore queen f3 rook g4 and yes now knight g2 the only move protecting the pawn because otherwise hello my bishop is pointing on the king f5 going with the plan you know it's normal plan when against such a structure you just push to you know to create weaknesses and here the first moment where white cracks knight e3 giving away the pawn the position of white is already lost but it's still a matter of like you know being careful because after king g2 what my opponent wanted to do is to give away the pawn in in, in exchange of activating her pieces but the pieces are not being activated because even after rook h1 i just am in time for rage 4 the best here and the thing that i was expecting the most for for why was to take and then we would trade the rooks and then why we want to trade all the rooks and just try you know play in the in the in the defense yes okay queen and the bishop against queen and a knight and black has an extra pawn but the king is weak even though if we trade the queens then it's just like i'm gonna outplay in the end game okay still it's gonna be a headache for one or two hours more but it's an easy win i mean according to um to the general practitioners of chess Back to our story, we were here and my opponent, instead of taking the pawn with the rook, plays rook h3. Now this is absolutely ridiculous because it just goes with rook g8, pinning the king and rook h1 is not in time because you cannot take the pawn next. I'm just, I, I won't give it. Queen d8 protecting the pawn, yes. This, okay, I, I really have to show, I mean, do I really have to show you that this pawn cannot move because the rook is pinning the, the king? Thank you. So this is why white goes for the second crack. Remember the first crack was knight e3 to give the pawn and the second crack is knight f5 throwing away the knight. Small tactics, double attack after g takes f5, queen takes f5 on the rook and the king but I don't think you should pause the video to find this one. I mean if you did then congratulations on finding rook e6 protected by the pawn. And here is the pin, but it's all fine. And if d5, then it just takes. So no worry here. Rook h4. And now we see that the white simply sacrificed the knight for a pawn, which is not enough. Obviously, I suggest the end game, but the end game is lost, even though it's one hour of a headache. It's actually practical level of what white should have done. But instead, my opponent went for queen, g queen d3. And that was the moment where I realized she did not want to trade queens. Do you know what you do when your opponent tells you that they don't want to trade queens? Exactly. You continue teasing them. Come on, sweetie. Don't you want to go to the end game? No? You don't want to go to the end game? Boom! Bishop g3. Goodbye, my friend. Goodbye, my lover. You've been the one for me. Bishop takes g3, and I guess we all understand what's a mate. Okay, I'm being very violent. In fact, in the game, it was rook h6, queen e4. And white resigns. Mm. Yeah. For round one, it was definitely an easy game for me. But I did do some decent job in preparing for this game. Because I did. it did take me some time to find out what was the right line to surprise my opponent. And I am so much sure. Hadn't I surprised her with this very dubious knight of six? The game wouldn't be easy at all. So yeah, moral of the story, do prepare for your games. Check out your opponents in the bases. If they, there, are no games, there are no games in their databases, well, you, you, you download their games from chess.com or leashes or whatever, where they play. No, I mean, bright side, it's like, it shows you how important it is to prepare an serious OTB tournament. Speaking of, my tomorrow's round is very early. It's like 9 a.m. So I gotta go. But you, everyone in each of you watching this video, do tell me what you think about it as well as of this format. Once again, it's the first time that I'm doing a recap. I've been inspired by my fellow friends and enemies, Anna Crowley and Alexander Botas, and let's, let's see where it takes me. You tell me. I do have a lot of games that I could potentially show you. I would love to hear your thoughts about this format. Thank you so much, everybody, and see you! in another recap. Bye-bye.